I'm here on my hike at Shandoah National Park and I'm doing the Stony Man Trail and like I mentioned earlier I was going to do a review of some photography equipment and some basic lenses and what equipment I use to get the pictures that I do. Um, nature photography is I would say it's actually very difficult if you're trying to get the you know, birds um, in flight or just birds in general, you're going to need something like this. A 70-300 uh, to 300 millimeter uh, lens. This is uh, by Tamron and this is a uh, 4 to 5.6. It's a little bit on the slow side, but uh, this is a fairly good lens. I think I bought it for around $450 to $500 when uh, I bought it and it's full frame. So that's really, really good. Um, and I have on it, to extend a little bit further, a 1.4 um, teleconverter, and that is also by a Tamron. In fact, you'll see a pattern here. All my lenses happen to be Tamron. Didn't plan it, but that's exactly what happened. Now, I love to do a good macro, and that's where I have this. It's my Tamron uh, 90 fixed uh, lens. It's a uh, 2.8, uh, it's a very fast aperture, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio uh, macro lens. So, and I also put on it a 2X teleconverter, also by Tamara. And I found this nice thing on Amazon, it's just a tripod, uh, tripod mount. Um, and I put that on the 2X teleconverter, that way, I can uh, get a little extra leverage on that when putting it on a tripod or any sort of mount and I can interchange that between my really long lens, the 370, or my um, macro 90. Um, I typically use it on the on this lens because it's a very fast lens and it kind of can keep up with the uh, closing down of the aperture with the 2x teleconverter. Um, but if I'm trying to get a really long shot, I will actually put it on with this 70 to uh, 300. And at the maximum distance, that is a, you know, approximately like 600 millimeter plus, since I use it on a D90, you actually get even further with that. You get probably close to about a 700 to 750 millimeter equivalent lens because this is a DX uh, uh, sensor on it. So it's a lot smaller than the full frame. So you're not actually utilizing the full lens. All these lenses are full frame that I'm showing you. Um, price range is between 450 and $600 uh, per lens. Um, that might be a little bit on the high side for some of you out there, but um, I really recommend spending your money on the lenses. Um, I've had this D90 for a long time now. I absolutely love it. Um, I think I bought it for around 500, well, it's between 500 and 800 dollars. I think I bought it for around 800 online. And I also added the battery uh, pack on it. That way you can hold two batteries with lithium ion or you can actually get the double A's and there's a special cartridge you can put in that it comes with uh, so in a pinch you can always use double A's but uh, the main reason to get it is that it adds some stability and grip especially on the vertical and um, I almost never have to charge this. Final lens is my um, Tamron 10 to 24 millimeter, and this is a 3.5, 4.5. Um, this is a cool lens. I got it when I was out in California, and I was uh, going through the um, Redwood National Forest, and all the Redwood forests there in the state and the national parks. Um, it's a great lens for those shots. You know, you get these g ginormous trees and you're trying to figure out a way to capture it on camera, you need a wide angle lens. And this is a very good lens for that purpose. Um, I keep that in my bag too because you'll find that there is circumstances where you're trying to get the 
the scale of the environment around you. Um, and there's just no way of doing it other than a wide angle lens. So that that's what I have this one for. And um, it's a great lens to have for that type of shot. So there we go. You get your three basic lenses here that I think if you're doing a specialty in outdoor photography, um, specifically nature photography, you've got your landscape and you know your um, your big picture type lens with the wide angle. You get your macro with the uh, close up and you know small things like this is good for insects or small items or I, mean, I could zoom in into these little you know rocks and everything that I have right here and I can get absolute detail I and mean, this thing is teeny tiny but I could actually zoom into the detail in fact I will demonstrate the detail you can get with the setup right here. But the furthest, the closer that you get to it, the more you have to worry about the level of um, focus in that it'll focus on you know the teeny tiny little point here but everything else is kind of washed out so you do have to be concerned with that with the macro lens getting up close but for nature photography and uh, specifically small items nothing beats this setup um, and like I said birds or other wildlife at a distance because most wildlife will not let you walk directly up to it and take its picture I mean they just it's not in their instinct um, so this lens here is great to be able to go and get up to the uh, animal without having to startle them as I speak just on that very point there is a bird right there and i'll demonstrate this lens so you can see it and see what this lens can do So obviously I'll be posting the stills from these shots here uh, with all three of these lenses on uh, this video. So you'll get to see kind of what the effect is of each of these lenses. And just to put in perspective, one more shot. shot this and you're going to see this landscape all right so there you go now I know in making this video there are definitely a lot of other cameras out there um, now I chose this one because it has a couple features I really liked um, I'm a big fan of this Nikon specific uh, feature of having the aperture and shutter uh, dials the way they are on this one and I cannot go without a camera that has that and some of the lower end uh, Nikon cameras do not have this front dial and I like to be able to adjust my aperture and my shutter independently I know you, there's a little button that you can go and press that and then you can adjust either one. But 
I much rather have that front dial and that rear dial. So I can actually adjust both at the same time. When you're in the moment, you really want that quick adjustment. And I always shoot in um, manual mode because I really like the control. I like to know what I can do with the image and what I'm exposing for. Um, now you typically have to know what you're doing with the camera to be able to get that level of control. But when you have things like these teleconverters, you have to adjust for that and compensate because they're going to make the exposure darker. Um, I know at the time of making this, probably the camera that I would be looking at um, uh, purchasing, you know, to replace this is going to be the Nikon D7200. And it has a lot of the same features as this. Um, I think any of the 7000 series, the 7000, 7100, or 7200 are all fine cameras. And um, I think I would be going with the 7200 just because I'm doing a lot more filming. And it's got some great filming uh, features as well as a lot better low light control. So those are the things that I'm looking for um, with the level of exposure. Um, I also have another camera I don't have it with me today. I have a Nikon D50, which was the one that I had predominantly used prior to this. Um, so I don't really buy too many, full, you know, big cameras like this uh, too often. Um, but every once in a while, I will put down the money and get a new frame. And I think the next one, like I said, might be the uh, 7000 series. I'm thinking 7100 or 7200. We'll see. But that's enough uh, tech talk. You've uh, gotten at least some exposure with equipment I have on the lens side. Um, I'll probably go over general equipment later on. Uh, not today, but in another video. And just go over some of the essential equipment I take when hiking, non-camera. Um, you know, what, what sort of mounts do I take? Do I take a tripod? Do I take, you know, what is it, what is actually necessary? And when is it good to uh, take things out of your pack? Because that's just as bad as not having something that you need. Anyway, just food for thought for the next video. And hopefully this little uh, hike with some of the shots you've seen. It's been entertaining. Till next time. See you later.